Hello, my name is Claudia Betzhaubold. I am a program manager on the Dynamics AX product team. In this video, I will show you how to define workflows for purchase requisitions and how different workflow configurations impact the runtime behavior of the purchase requisition review process. I will be demoing this on the Dynamics AX 2012 RTM build that is build number 947 using the standard Contoso demo data. In order to take full advantage of this video, you should have a basic understanding of the concepts of the Dynamic AX workflow infrastructure. We'll start out with me playing the role of Julia, an employee at Contoso who needs to request some products for her job and therefore entered a purchase requisition on the Enterprise Portal. Julia has navigated to the procurement area, opened her purchase requisition list page and entered a new purchase requisition. Once she has added at least one line item to the requisition and saved it, the yellow workflow bar is available for her to submit the requisition for review. It shows the name of the requisition workflow process that this requisition will need to go through. You can set up workflow such that different requisitions go through different review processes based, for example, on the total amount of the requisition. Julia can see instructions defined by the workflow author that provide her with information that she needs to know prior to submitting the document for review. When Julia clicks on the Submit button, she can enter comments for the reviewers and submit. However, we will cancel the submission of the document for now and instead explore where the purchase requisition workflow came from in the first place and how you can author the purchase requisition workflow that is right for your organization. In the next part of this demo, I will be playing the role of Inga, the purchasing manager. Inga is logged onto the Windows client and she navigated to the procurement and sourcing area where under Setup she locates the menu item for procurement and sourcing workflows. Managing workflows is part of the Enable Purchasing Process duty, which out of the box we have assigned to the Purchasing Manager role. Let us first look at the workflows defined in the Procurement and Sourcing area. As you can see, there is one workflow of type PurchRec Review, and it is called Automatic Purchase Requisition Approval. The workflow is active, and it is marked as default. This is the workflow that Julia saw when she was ready to submit her purchase requisition. As the name indicates, this workflow simply approves all purchase requisitions. The way this is achieved is by adding just one element to the workflow and setting an automatic action with a condition that always evaluates to true. In our case, the condition is that the purchase requisition name is not blank, which, since the name is mandatory, is always true. In the Dynamics AX Expression Editor, you enter a blank value by putting the cursor into the field and then tabbing out of it. Let's go ahead and close this workflow again. While we do not believe that it is a sensible review process for purchase requisitions, to simply approve all requests, no questions asked, using this workflow can be very helpful in the initial stages of a project implementation as it lets you focus on the end-to-end procure-to-pay process before you dive into the details of the purchase requisition approval itself. Next, Inga will create a new purchase requisition workflow. To do so, she clicks on New and selects Purchase Requisition Review from the list. When Inga clicks on Create Workflow, the Workflow Editor opens. On the left, you see a repository of the different elements available to construct purchase requisition review processes. Inga wants purchasing managers to approve purchase requisitions first, and then she wants them to be reviewed by purchasing agents. So she drags those elements onto the canvas and connects them up. The 
Then she goes and configures each individual element. Approvals can consist of multiple steps. Double-clicking on the approval elements gets you to the steps. Inga selects the first step and opens the properties form. She enters a work item subject. This is what appears in the approvers work list so that they can see on first glance what kind of work item needs their attention. The work item instructions let Inga provide more detail about what is expected of the approvers. Inga assigns the approval to the purchasing managers. To do so, she selects participant as assignment type. On the role based tab, she selects security role participants and finally she selects the purchasing manager role from the list of available roles. As a result, every time a purchase requisition gets submitted for approval, every user who has a role of purchasing manager will receive a work item to approve it. Inga can define how much time the approvers have to complete their work item. Let's give them a week. And finally, she can define how many of the approvers need to approve. Do we consider the approval done when a single approver has approved, or the majority of approvers, or a percentage of all the approvers, or does every single purchasing manager have to approve the purchase requisition for it to be considered approved? Let's say that as soon as one purchasing manager approves, uh, we're fine. Once she's done configuring the approval element, Inga goes back to the workflow overview, selects the review task and configures it pretty much the same way. The only difference is that a task does not contain steps. Inga opens the properties form, again she enters a work item subject and she enters instructions for the purchasing agent to complete that task. Inga assigns the task to the purchasing agent role. And she configures a time limit for it. Note that for tasks it is not possible to configure how many users will have to complete it. Instead, each task can only be performed by one user. If there is more than one purchasing agent in the company, which is likely, all of them will see the work item, but the first one to accept the work item will get to work on it. Now there is only one more item for Inga left to do, which is to take care of the errors and warnings. Double-clicking on any entry in the pane brings her to the area where she can resolve it. In this case, Inga types in the instructions that she wants the employee to see prior to submitting the workflow. She closes the property form and now she's ready to save and close the workflow. She can type in version notes if she liked to, then she activates the new version. As you can see now, in the work list there is an additional entry for the newly created workflow. The last thing that Inga needs to do is to set this new workflow as the default one. If we go back and look at Julia's purchase requisition list, we can see that the workflow bar now points to the new workflow that Inga just created. Once Julia submits the purchase requisition, she can see where it is in the workflow process by looking at the review process details. In our case, the purchase requisition is waiting for approval from Inga, the purchasing manager, because that is how the workflow has been configured. When Inga, the purchasing manager, opens her role center, either on the Windows client or an enterprise portal, she will see that there is a work item to approve a purchase requisition, 
waiting for her. Inga can look at a preview of the purchase requisition and she can take action directly from the unified work list. Or she can go to the purchase requisition and review it more carefully before she approves or rejects it. Instead of waiting for Inga to approve the purchase requisition, we will have Julia recall it again. A purchase requisition can be recalled from the review process at any point in time. This will put it back into draft mode, where it can be deleted, or Julia can make changes and submit it once more. The review process will start from the very beginning again. In the final section of this video, we will look at how Inga can create a workflow at the purchase requisition line item level. As before, Inga opens the procurement and sourcing workflow list and selects to create a new workflow. This time, however, she selects the purchase requisition line review from the list of workflows. When she clicks create workflow, the workflow editor opens and Inga authors a workflow just as she did with the document level workflow. The only difference is that at runtime this workflow will operate over each line item separately. Let's assume that Inga wants to create a process where requests for computer-related products need to go through an IT by desk review before they are sent to the requester's manager for approval. All non-computer-related requests get sent to the manager directly. Inga cons inserts a conditional element as well as the review task and the approval element and then she hooks all the elements up to establish the sequence of the flow. Next, Inga configures each individual element. She enters a meaningful name on the condition which will make it easier to understand the workflow afterwards. And she enters the condition which we had determined to say that if the purchase requisition line category is at or below the category of computer. Inga configures the by desk review by giving it a meaningful name entering subject and instructions just you know fill in <laughs> your information here and then assigning it to the appropriate queue. All that Inga needed to do for this was to create the ID by desk queue in the organization management module beforehand. Next, Inga configures the approval to go to the requester's manager. Inga selects hierarchy as assignment type. On the hierarchy selection, she selects a managerial hierarchy she will start from the requester and then as a condition we will stop when the employee's line manager level is 1. This means that we stop when we are one level above the requester in the position reporting hierarchy. Since different line items on a purchase requisition can be requested for different people, this might mean that each line could be sent to a different manager for approval. All that's left is that Inga needs to enter a submission instruction. Again, just fill in your detail here. And then she can save and close the workflow.
Now all she needs to do is to hook it up into a document level workflow. Let's go and modify the purchase requisition review workflow that Inga created a while ago. We will remove the approval element and add a line element before the purchasing agent review. Then we will point the line element to the line level workflow that we just created. At runtime, each purchase requisition will first be split into its lines, which will be sent to the manager for approval and, if the request is for computers, it will also go to the IT buy desk. Once all the lines have been processed and approved by the reviewers, then the entire purchase requisition will go to the purchase agent for a final review before it is placed on a purchase order. This is just one example of how you could configure your workflows. You are free to put the elements in any sequence that makes sense for your business.